All right, this is a video uh, where we're going to look at a third way to analyze the position versus time data from the Spinny Thing Lab. Um, I've got my data over here, the X column, these are the times. Uh, we mark the position every two seconds. And the Y axis values, these are the positions every two seconds. Uh, they appear to be in centimeters. And um, to, to kind of fit the, the data, I ended up with a quadratic fit here. Uh, so I typed in f of x, and then I had a slider in here for this number. Um, you can see I can try 0 0.4, try 0 0.6, 0 0.7, uh, but really it looked pretty good around 0 0.51, 0 0.52, somewhere in there. Okay, it looked like a pretty good fit. Um, this is a graph of position versus time. The slope is curved. It's getting steeper as time goes on. Uh, that doesn't mean the velocity is getting steeper. It means the velocity is, is getting higher. It's increasing. It's going faster. So that's kind of exciting. It's not CVPM. Its velocity is changing. Um, but that presents a problem here if we want to create a graph of velocity versus time because what do I use for the slope? So I've gone into Desmos and added a couple of lines here. Um, this set A, comma, F of A is going to create a data point and, or a point on the curve, I should say. I've got a slider in here as well for A. It asked me if I wanted a slider, and I said yes. And so now this just finds points along the curve. Um, after that, I added in a value, or another point, I should say, B. And I could have I could have put in a slider. Let's see if I can get it to do that. Get rid of this. OK, now it's unhappy. Add a slider for B. OK, so now I've got a slider, and I can slide B around as well. Instead, though, uh, what I decided to do was tell it B in terms of A. So I said B is going to be A minus 2, so minus 2 seconds. Now when I move A, you can see B moves with it, so that they're always 2 seconds apart. The reason that I did that is because I want to then craft a line between those two points. Okay, A line connecting two points on the curve, that's a secant. So in this line here, I've told it how to calculate the slope between those two points, m. Uh, we're finding the change in the vertical, so f of a minus f of b. And we're dividing that by the change in the horizontal, a minus b. So this is just change in the vertical divided by change in the horizontal. Right here, it's telling me that it has a value of 5.2. Um, and the units on that, let's see, that would be centimeters and then divided by seconds. Uh, and then here's where I'm telling it to plot a line or to draw a line connecting those two points. So take that slope value, m, uh, and multiply that by x minus a, and then we're going to add to that f of a. Uh, not really that math savvy to you know what I'm doing there. Some, some, some math, some desmosy things. Uh, but the long story short is now I have the secant that I can drag along here. Okay. And so if I put that secant here with b at negative one second and a at positive one second um, we can see the slope is zero and uh, that coincides with the slope of my curve at time zero okay it would have a velocity of zero started from rest if i want to know the velocity at uh, time one second or sorry if i want to know the velocity at time two seconds i put a at three that means that b would be at 3 minus 2. So b is at 1. Okay, so I'm same space either side of 2 seconds. I get a slope value of 2.08. That would be centimeters per second. Okay, and I can go out here. Well, let's see, do I have more data? This looks like the last data point. I can slide it. So I'm a second either side here. Uh, so at 15 and then 15 minus 2, 13 seconds. And the line that connects those two points, um, that secant has a slope which is roughly equal to uh, the slope at this midpoint. Okay. Um, I should maybe expand this out for a second and explain what I'm talking about. So if I have this as a slider, uh, add in a slider for B. Okay. And if you look at this, we already talked about how the slope at the beginning is pretty close to zero. Uh, the slope at the end is pretty close to 14. Right now, though, this line that connects the point at time 0 and the point at time, let's slide it here, to time 14, um, you know, it's it's the line, the secant line is steeper than the curve at the beginning, 
and then it's less steep than the curve at the at the end. Uh, where on the graph is the secant roughly parallel to the curve? Well, if you look at it, maybe somewhere around here. Okay, they look pretty close to parallel. Okay, right in that region, uh, and that's about halfway in between my 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 endpoints between my A and the B. So we're going to use that understanding that the slope of the secant roughly approximates the slope of the curve halfway between the endpoints for the secant. Um, you know, I, I get a value of, of about um, seven-ish, okay, for the slope of my secant. And if I slide these points really close together in the middle here, which would be around seven seconds, uh, yeah, let's see, yeah, okay. You can see, can I zoom? You can see how close the curve and the line are to matching in terms of slope, right? That's how the Earth's surface works. If you look at a small enough chunk of it, it seems flat. Um, anyways, so what I'm doing is I'm using the secant to to check for values of the slope uh, at various points along this curve. And what I'm going to do with that then is find the velocity at certain points along this graph by finding the slope on the position versus time graph. And then I'm going to create, create another plot of that. So let me collect those real quick, and then we'll look at where I go with that. So again, to show you what I'm doing, I went back to b equals a minus 2, so that there's always a uh, two-second difference between a and b. And now if I want to find the velocity at what would be time 6 seconds, I'm going to put a at as close to 7 as I can get it. A, there we go. That's going to put b at 5. Okay. And I get the slope, which again is going to ah, zoom in here, man. You can see how the slope of my secant line really is pretty close to parallel to the slope of my curve at that point. Um, so that gives me a velocity value 6.24. Okay. And I'm marking that not at six seconds, but at 18 centimeters. That was the position that I was at at six seconds, 18 centimeters, six seconds. So down here, plotting the velocity at that position. All right, so now I have all my data in here uh, for velocity. Those are those values here, velocity, and these are the positions. Okay, 100 centimeters, 77 centimeters. These are what the velocity values were. What kind of relationship do we have? I haven't really looked at the graph, but if I look at this, um, at 18 centimeters, my velocity is 6.24. So when I double the when I double the displacement, which is basically what happens here, right? 36.5. So I'm twice as far down the ramp. Is my velocity twice as much? No, it's not. Um, it's only 8.36. Okay. Um, if you look at this, when I was 10 centimeters down the ramp, my velocity was 4.23. 36 and a half, that's just a smidge under 40. So that's like four times as far down the ramp. See how the velocity has doubled. So the relationship here is not linear. If I want to be going twice as fast, I have to go four times as far. Okay, so there's that kind of a relationship happening. Um, if I want double the velocity, I have to have two squared as much uh, displacement. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to create a linear plot of this data. That's something that you're going to often be asked to do. Let me go ahead and switch this so we can see the graph a little bit better. All right, so now we can see this data a little bit better. I need to change my axes labels because this is no longer position versus time. Now on the horizontal axis, now I have a position. Now you can see it goes to a position of roughly 100 centimeters. And on the vertical axis, this is velocity, velocity in centimeters per second. Okay, um, what's the relationship? Well, again, if I want to double the velocity, uh, so you can see here, Oh gosh, at uh, 20 centimeters, according to this graph, the velocity would be about 6. So if I want to get to a velocity of 12, if I want twice the velocity, do I double the position? Well, no, that's not 12. I'm going to have to go out to closer to 80, right? This would be 12 right about here, okay? That's at about 80, so I've had to 
uh, quadruple the position to get double the velocity. Okay, um, so there's a there's kind of a squared relationship going there. I have to plot it as uh, f of x equals c times the square root of x, or another way that I could do that would be to say, um, uh, Bollix, uh, y squared equals c x. Uh, bump my slider slightly but yeah basically that's the same the same thing okay and so that's the key to creating a linear plot of this data I want to create a plot where I get a straight line um, let's add this as a note so if you look at this uh, a linear relationship is gonna have the form y equals mx plus b but what is y here uh, y is the velocity but I'm not dealing with just the velocity I want um, the velocity, come on, man, add a note. It's not just velocity, where's this note going? It's not just the velocity, it's the velocity squared. Okay, uh, equals some constant times, uh, what's my x-axis variable here? It's position, okay, plus b, e, what would be uh, represent on this graph for a vertical intercept that would be if I started off with some velocity so I'm going to say um, initial velocity um, but again well, well we'll see it here in a second let me just go ahead and switch up this graph so I'm going to tell it to instead of plotting velocity versus position I want it to plot don't do anything to position let's just call that x2 uh, but to those y column values, the y2 column, we're gonna square those. Let's see what happens here. All right, so that's what I've had it do. I've had it plot uh, position. Don't do anything weird to that. Just plot that as the x-axis value. But for the vertical axis value to square the things that were in column y2, these were those, uh, those velocities that we got from the sequence. If you look at that, that looks like like the line. So I'm going to shut off this other data set. Um, so now I'm just looking at those green dots. And let's plot, uh, let's be fancy, f of x equals mx. I don't want m. Let's go with, uh, got to give it some weird name. Let's go wx plus b. Okay, because I already used m somewhere else. So w, got a slider for that. Adjust that until my dots line up with it. And where's my slider for B? Did I already, already use B for something else. So let's call this uh, V. No, let's call it, uh, oh, cripes, Q. Okay, add a slider for Q. And if I make Q pretty darn close to zero, um, then I have a slope on this graph of pretty darn close to two. To what, though? I need to think about what are my units if this is velocity squared. And this is position in centimeters. What are the units for my slope here? And then we'll talk about what the equation of this line is. But this is a linear plot of uh, velocity versus position. Okay.